this was the last time Joe Schmidt would take charge of a home Guinness Six Nations match for Ireland. He needed his men to win, preferably with a bonus point, to keep Ireland's hopes of retaining the title alive. They were dealt a blow just before kickoff when Rob Carney was ruled out. Jordan Larmer came into the starting 15. France were on a high after a 17-point win over Scotland on match day three. But it was Ireland who were out of the blocks quickly. They turned down the opportunity to kick for the posts, going for the corner instead, and their ambition was rewarded when captain Rory Best used his strength to drive over the line in the corner for the opening try of the game in just the third minute. A tenth international try for the Ulster man, who was making his last competitive home appearance for the men in green, having announced in midweek that he'd likely be retiring after the World Cup later this year. Sexton kicked an excellent conversion, and it was seven points to nil early on. Then in the 16th minute, the home side came close to adding to their lead. France were trying to work the ball out from their own goal line, and Kean Healy went for an opportunist score. He touched the ball on the line, but the officials deemed that he didn't get downward pressure, and a knock-on was the verdict. He's actually, he's actually knocked it on. Okay, he's actually not placed the ball. He was entitled to go for it, yeah. but he's actually knocked it on. So. Ireland were dominating territorially and approaching the half hour they got over for a second try and it was a beautifully conceived five-pointer. Sexton combined with Ring Rose, the out half on the wraparound, raced through the gap and over the line for a superb try. It was a score that Ireland's pressure deserved with France struggling to get out of their own half. Sexton converted for a 14 points to no score lead. Soon after that, the TMO was once again called into action. Ringrose did really well to collect Sexton's kick, and he got to the line. But unfortunately for the Irish, the young Leinsterman was deemed to have knocked on. Very close to a great score for the 24-year-old, but it remained 14-0. However, the incessant Irish pressure was taking its toll on the French defence, who had spent almost the entirety of the first half fighting to hold back wave after wave of Irish attacks. Jack Conan had replaced Josh van der Fleer earlier, and the substitute got over for try number three, using sheer brute force to get past two French tacklers and over the line to move Ireland into a 19-0 lead. Conan's sixth international try in 13 appearances, this one put a lot of daylight between the sides approaching half-time. Sexton was off target with the conversion, but Ireland would take that 19-point lead into the break, their biggest half-time lead over France in the history of the competition. France rallied at the start of the second half, but failed to trouble the scoreboard operator, and in the 56th minute, Ireland secured the bonus point fourth try, a wonderful opportunist score. CJ Stander passed to Keith Earls, for the third international in a row, the Munster man was over for a try. This one sealed the bonus. France had no answer to the guile and pace of the Irish. Sexton landed the conversion before being replaced by Jack Carty, and Ireland were 26 points to nil ahead. The referee sent Dorian Aldegheri to the sin bin following a number of French indiscretions. Having been outplayed throughout the game, France finished with a flourish to take the bare look off the scoreboard. They hadn't been held scoreless in the championship since 1990. When Aldred passed to Yuan Uge, the winger charged for the line, and there was some consolation for the visitors. It was Uge's third try of this season's Guinness Six Nations, and one that the large French contingent in the Dublin crowd had waited a long time for. When Baptiste Serran converted, it was 26-7. And right at the death, France got over for a second try to put further gloss on the scoreline. A number of men in blue got over the line. And it was Camille Chad who was credited with the score after the TMO had a look at the replay. It was hard to see who got the touchdown, but the Racing 92 hooker claimed the score. Again, Serran converted. And with the final kick of the game, it left it 26 points to 14. The bonus point victory keeps Ireland's hopes of retaining the title alive, albeit they have a massive game against Wales in Cardiff to come. France will lick their wounds and travel to Rome to round off their campaign, buoyed perhaps by the two late tries. It finished at the Aviva Stadium. Ireland 26, 
France, 40.